What's up, best friends? It's Brian Deach, and today we're going to be talking about IoT, the Internet of Things, or as I like to call it, IOC, the Internet of Crap. Can I say that? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Uh, but with that said, right, when we think about IoT, we're really talking about a use case at your branch office. Now, don't think of branches being like a little office. It could be a factory, manufacturing facility, factory floor. It doesn't matter. And what do you have at the branch office that's IoT, right? You might have some HVAC systems that are over there. Uh, perhaps you have like a water device that's internet connected. And then for uh, surveillance, we have our cameras, maybe some connected cars, TV speakers, the list kind of goes on and on. And what do these devices need to do? Well, these devices need to, to IoT itself, right? They need to go out to the internet. Now, unfortunately, what is on the internet? Well, I guess there's some good stuff, but also there's the bad, right? That's where all the bad people live, command and control and all that good stuff. And so it's 2023. And so instead of just opening this up to the internet, what we're thinking is, how about we start going to like approved, sanctioned SaaS-based applications where you can have a little bit more access and control. And what has Big Firewall taught us about this in the past? In order to secure this, what do you need to do? You need to buy our firewalls, right? You need to deploy these firewalls in redundancy. And oh, by the way, uh, we make different sizes and models. So it's up to you to figure out, do you need a small, medium, large, extra large, gigantor? I have no idea. And then on top of all that, the other side is, you have to do the maintenance, patches, and upgrades. I think I just threw up in my mouth, right? And why do they want this device on-prem? Well, the idea here or the concern would be, what happens if this device is compromised somehow and it can start to bounce around east to west? And you be able to do your NAC and segmentation and firewall rules and IPS. I'm telling you, when I think about doing this, I really want to kind of just throw up in my mouth. So I'm going to, I'm going to say, hey, friends don't let friends deploy firewalls anymore. Uh, it's, it's not a good recipe uh, for success. So how do we actually address this in the Zscar world? Well, said it once, I'll say it a thousand times, we have the world's largest security cloud, the Zero Trust Exchange. And the idea here is that I can do all of that crazy firewall stuff just in my cloud, but you don't have to worry about sizing. You don't have to worry about pa uh, patches, maintenance, and upgrades. That's really on me to figure out. So when this device is actually going northbound and trying to reach out to the internet, what I want to do is to intercept that traffic transparently and send it to the Zscare cloud. There's a variety of different ways, but we'll just say Zscare Pure today. I have a lightweight appliance. It's called a Zscare connector. Sole goal in life of this is to kind of say any traffic that's going outbound to intercept that traffic and send it to the Zscare cloud. Now, when it goes there, I'm going to send it to the Zero Trust Exchange. And this device doesn't need an agent. Is this going to arrive here? And that traffic is going to come over here and arrive. Now, you have the ability to say, hey, you know what? We can allow the IoT stuff to talk to the internet and say, hey, go for it, right? Go over here and talk to the IoT devices. But the reality is we want to stop doing bad things in life, right? So I'm going to say, come over here, big old red X. Don't allow IoT devices to communicate openly with the internet. So instead, I'm saying, let's start to sanction applications and put it over here. Now, the problem that we've had in the past is that you're trying to figure out, hey, I have IP addresses and they're reaching out over here. What, are, like who's what, right? And what protocol are they talking to? It's, it's a lot of policy work. And we looked at this and said, you know what? There's gotta be a better way of approaching this. So if I look at this and say, I have branched location, I have devices just transparently sending traffic to the Zscare cloud, what kind of information can I get on that? So. First and foremost, I look at what we call like an IoT discovery report. Surprise, surprise, you're actually looking at my house. So there's a lot of information in here, but imagine that this was your branch. You can see all of these different things that are coming through. And what I wanna be able to do is to provide some guidance so you can help you orchestrate that policy. So let's dive into it. I'm gonna go and click on the IoT icon and it takes me over here. Now, I have an IP address, 
but more importantly, this auto label. I can tell you that I have an Alexa, an Apple de device. I have some ring devices and smart things, right? Ah, now think about how much more useful that is. Now I can drill into this a little bit more and I'll pick off on, I think the ring doorbell. As I do that, I can see that ring doorbell is reaching out to ring.com and, and, and out to AWS. From a policy perspective, I can say, hey, if I have a ring device at any location, has two destinations it can get to that are defined right there. And oh, by the way, it can't go out on DNS, it can't go out on NTP, it can only go out on SSL. And if I dial it back one more, let's say I wanna click, you know, I, I turns out I have some solar panels at my house. <clears throat> Think about how scary that could be, right? that device that's reaching out to the internet. But I know definitively right here that that one device that I have phoning home is going out to solarcity.com and it's doing it over SSL. So if you start to think about how this could impact the greater good, all of your devices in your environment, we can come over here and say, hey, you know what? If it's HVAC, you can go to this HVAC application. If that's a water sensor or a smart TV, you know definitively it can't go over here, you can come over here. As far as patches and maintenance and upgrades, that's on Zisco, right? You are responsible for setting policy in itself. Now, I'm not gonna get into it today, but this little Zisco connector that I have living on-prem, it can do some of that east to west segmentation for you as well, but that's not that important. What really is important is, I think that uh, NAC is silly, and I don't think that you need it, but like, how do I solve that problem? Well, I can come over here, let's say you have some user they bring in a Raspberry Pi, they plug it into the network. What is that device gonna do? It's going to do what? It's going to reach outbound, and as being the kind of the, the, the default gateway, I'm gonna take that traffic, I'm gonna send it over here, and when it arrives at the Zero Trust Exchange, it's like, wait a second, that's not a device that I know about, just go ahead and block it. Now, I don't have to worry about this thing phoning home, to like brianbeach.com where I'm gonna do a reverse shell back in here and then pivot around the, uh, the neighborhood or the branch, right? I don't have to allow bad things to happen in my environment. So this is one of the, the cool ways that we approach doing zero trust with IoT, right? Take the guesswork out of it. Don't rely on looking at IP addresses and doing crazy mappings. Allow the Zscare cloud to define that for you. Get out of that routine of deploying firewalls. Get out of that, right? Don't have to manage those things. Do it all here in a single unified console. And with that said, team, I guess that's all I have to say about IoT or IOC, wink, wink, if you know what I'm saying. If you have any questions, concerns, whatever, leave a comment, like, subscribe. I have no idea, but I appreciate y'all for watching and I can't wait to, to hang out with you next time. Thank you.